Well, hey, my little angels, come on in, everyone. We're working in the kitchen today, so everybody come in. We're going to bake today. Well, not really bake, but you'll see. You'll see. So everyone crowd around. Short at the front, please. Tall up behind me. Good. Good. Come on in. Um, I did. I know it's hard on your feet, so there's some bench seats right there. I have a seat for those that want to have a sit. And there's some footstools over there if you want to put your feet up, whatever you need to do. Okay? And we do have some beverages on tap today. Um, we have a lovely sweet orange iced tea um, with frozen peaches inside. I love peach and orange together. Oh, so good. Um, and there's lots of ice, so make it a chilled one. And if you want something hot, I've got some coffee over there. And it's Irish cream today. And it is caffeinated, so it'll give you a kick in your step. <laughs> see we have some new people. Welcome in. I'm glad you're here. Um, we do this every once in a while. It's not typical ASMR, but there are things I can tap on, and, which I will do. But there's also just something comforting about being in the kitchen or doing laundry or making beds or anything. You know, that's just normal everyday stuff. And sometimes I like to chat with you while we do this. So welcome. Please give it a thumbs up. That's a thumb. <laughs> uh, share it if you want. And comments are amazing. If you're comfortable commenting, please do. We love the comments on this channel. And it just helps us to connect. I love watching you guys interact with each other. I love interacting with you. I love knowing what you think, what you feel, what your video ideas are. I've had a lot of requests for a cooking video, so we're going to make two things, two very, very easy things um, today. And when we connect like that, we take this great big world and go and make it smaller. And isn't that a good thing? So please hit that subscribe button below. I'd really appreciate it. And hello, 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 hello to all my returning little angels. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Thank you for always being here. It, you're just a joy to me, you really are. And please keep those comments coming if you're comfortable. So guys, we're gonna make two things today. The first one, I've had a lot of requests and we are going to make homemade granola. So easy, I don't even measure anymore, but I am gonna tell you guys how to measure. Um, and all, and I have everything we need. There's not a lot of ingredients out. So for the granola, I use a cookie sheet. I have this aluminum one. And before all the ecologists get on my back, it's my house. Anyways, <laughs> I also use parchment paper. I prefer this parchment paper that's already pre-cut from the dollar store. Um, just because I'm too lazy to get the scissors, which are right here beside me. Um, because if you've ever seen me try to open saran wrap or I'm sorry, cling film, you'll see. I'm not good with stuff like that. So pre-cut is always better for me. And we're gonna need this for both recipes. So this one is the granola. We're also gonna be making gluten-free cereal um, marshmallow treats. but it is gluten-free. So I just do this, okay? Now, the original recipe for the granola, I will use my scissors now, because my tooth hurts actually. Um, and don't do what I do, cut above the seal. You know, the reseal thing, I always cut through it. So the original recipe is for six cups of granola. I don't need that much this time. I always keep two of these full, as much as I can and this was placed on the counter this morning to let me know that it's empty uh, because Uncle Angel and Baby Angel have it every morning with their yogurt or cereals um, they just like to sprinkle it on things so what I'm gonna do today is just measure this amount that I need but the original recipe is six cups of granola and to make granola you need four things you need rolled oats. Now, just so you guys can see, this is gluten-free rolled oats. You can use the Quaker brand, you can use whatever brand you wanna use. I'm just gonna use this as my measuring cup, 
because that's all I need today. So I'm just gonna pour it in. I'm gonna leave a wee bit of space because you gotta be able to put your spoon in it, right? So as you can see, I just used it as my measuring and I'm gonna pour it in this measuring cup right here, a big one. And then you need an oil, you can use butter, you can use coconut oil. You, I'm just gonna be using this vegetable oil today. Um, I don't like the flavor of olive oil in this, so that's why I'm using neutral flavoring and I'm out of my avocado oil, which I find very neutral. You need a sugar. You can use whatever kind you want. I like using the maple syrup. I think it works better and I don't have to melt the sugar that way. And you need some flavoring. I like the cinnamon. Okay. So if you're doing the six cups, you're going to want a quarter cup of oil and no, a quarter cup of your sugar. So your syrup, whatever you use, corn syrup, maple syrup, honey, whatever you want to use, a third of a cup. And then you're going to want about, about the same, a third to a half a cup of oil because you want every single oat coated. Now, I don't have to do that because I'm not doing six cups. So I'm gonna eyeball it. I may need more, I may need less. And I bet you, it's probably an eighth, eighth of a cup. And then with the maple syrup, we get this fresh from the maple syrup farm, thanks to my aunt and uncle. And I pour a goodly amount in because they like it sweet. And then I want to put a little wee bit. The oven is preheated for the granola. You're going to want your oven preheated at 325. If you'd rather do 300, the recipe called for 300, but I find 325 perfect for me. And you're supposed to stir it up like every 10, 15 minutes. I don't do that. I stir it once halfway through. Who has time to keep running in? So about a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then if you want, you can add vanilla. And since I have the vanilla out for the cereal treats, we're gonna add just a splash of vanilla. You do know that a cup is a teaspoon, right? Not a cup, a cap. A cap full is a teaspoon. And you just want a little wee bit. Now, you're gonna wanna use a spatula, a rubber one to stir because it's a pain in the butt. Now. You can add nuts to this. I'm just making a nut-free one and I actually am out of nuts. Um, you can add dried fruit at the end, if you like after it's cooked. But because it, it's going on the yogurt, I just do this. I have added nuts. Love slivered almonds in this or pecan pieces or even walnut pieces. Buy the pieces, guys. Save yourself some trouble unless you need to get out your aggressions. So you're gonna stir it like this. Okay, you see how that's, every piece is moistened? You want that. Now we're gonna pour it onto our cookie sheet and let the spatula do the work for you in the scraping. It'll work out best for you, trust me on this. And you wanna scrape down everything. Now, you can do one of two things. You can spread it out so it takes up the whole space so they're all um, very loose. I put mine together pretty tightly because they like chunks. They do. So I keep mine kind of like this, just so it'll go a little bit chunky after it's cooked. Now, you're gonna pop this in the oven. For 45 minutes to an hour, that's it. You're gonna give it a stir halfway through and you decide how well you like it. This is how well we like it. Okay, so you saw the color it was. And this is the color it turns into. It's much darker, see? And you can hear the crunch. Okay, so that's what you're gonna end up with. When you take it out, you let it cool on the parchment there's a double reason for that parchment. Then, when it's cooled, you're gonna pull up one side, pull up the other, hold the bottom, and you're gonna pour it into whatever you want. I'm gonna be pouring it into this. You can pour it into Tupperware, something that's gonna be airtight. And that's it. 
That is homemade granola, guys. You cannot get any easier than that. That's it. So now let's make our second recipe. Now, for the second recipe, I'm just gonna move some of this out of the way that we don't need. Okay, and we don't need these. Okay, so for this recipe, you need your marshmallows. And we were lucky enough to find gluten-free marshmallows. They're not that easy. But you should use um, mini marshmallows, but they didn't have gluten-free minis. So we're gonna use 40 large marshmallows. And I think the large ones are cheaper too, so just go with it. Just go. And you're gonna use the cereal of your choosing, okay? You can use anything. You can use Rice Krispies. You can use Fruit Loops. Oh my God, Fruit Loops is good. Um, you can use Mini Wheats. You can use Cheerios, especially those multi-grain Cheerios. So freaking good, guys. Today, I'm using Corn Pops. One of the reasons is they're glu gluten-free. So is Rice Chex, Corn Chex, Chocolate Chex, you know. Fruity Pebbles and Cocoa Pebbles. And they're gluten-free as well. So we're going to be using this. We don't need the oil because we're using butter. And I'm gonna show you a trick. We're also gonna use some vanilla, and we're gonna make them extra special, and we're gonna do a mix-in of white chocolate chips. You can mix in anything you want. So I've lined my pan with butter. You are gonna to wanna to do that right at the very beginning, guys, okay? I'm gonna turn my burner, I have a giant pot, okay? And I'm gonna turn my burner to medium. Okay, we're gonna put in, this is an easy way to remember it. It's 40 marshmallows, you, that's easy. Five tablespoons of butter. And it's five tablespoons of butter and five cups of cereal. You can't go wrong with those measurements. I've already measured out my butter. I'm gonna put that in there. Okay, this will have to be washed now. Now you're gonna put that in and let the butter start melting. And I personally, there's two ways of doing this, you guys. You can just let it melt, big deal, right? Or you can brown it. Now brown butter is when you take butter past its melting point to where it gets dark, not black, dark. And you see those bits on the bottom? It just makes it so yummy, right? So it's so much better. And it gets that nutty flavor and I brown butter for almost everything that I do baking, especially cookies. I love brown butter cookies. So three, five, seven, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we're at 15 marshmallows so far. These are really big ones too. So I don't know that I have 40, but we're gonna try, okay? 18. 21. Yeah, we're not going to have it. All right. So we're going to put about 30 marshmallows in here. And these are huge. These are not just like these are jumbos. So I think regular size marshmallows, they'll be fine. Now we're going to melt those. And again, for this, you are going to need. Hi, guys. Sorry, you're only seeing half my face. You are going to need one of these. Okay. Now you're going to melt it. And then we're going to measure out our cereal, okay? And remember, it's five, it's, you know, five tablespoons of butter. In this case, 30, but it's really 40 marshmallows. And we're going to use five cups of cereal. And I'm just going to go grab a measuring cup, guys. Because, of course, that I didn't consider. cup. This is four cups, so I'm going to measure it out and then we'll just add a little bit more. Because of the less marshmallows, we're going to see how it looks before we add in the other. So I'm filling that right up. Right up. And it's going to be 
garbage. And then I just had, that's probably a quarter to a third of a cup of white chocolate chips laying around. So rather than let them go stale or stand there eating them, I'm gonna put them in. Now I'm gonna move us over here, okay? All right, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna try to tilt you. Okay, there we go. Let's move you a little bit further there. I think that should do it, okay. And you just, it does take a little bit of time to melt all this. And you want it, that's why they like the mini marshmallows, they melt faster. But guys, this is so easy. It's so easy. But believe me, you wanna have your pan close by. So what should we talk about? Has anybody been struggling with anything lately? I think I've offended someone and it, I'm really upset about it because I really like this person a lot and I would never do anything to offend them, but I'm afraid I have. So I'm hoping, I sent them a letter of apology and I hope that they'll accept it. Apologizing is hard sometimes, isn't it? But you know what? You gotta do it. You do the crime, you do the time. <laughs> now, I will admit, I am one of those people who will apologize even when I don't think I'm in the wrong. I'm just gonna turn my heat up a little bit more. Um, and don't worry about it sticking to your pot. Um, you run really hot water in your pot and it'll come right out. You re basically, you remelt it with the water. So we're, see, it's starting to melt. You can see that right here. I'm gonna show you. Oops, there, see, <laughs> it's starting to milk. Hey, cook's perk. But apologizing can be hard and I have many times, especially, especially with my mother, I would apologize when I didn't think I had done anything wrong. Um, because sometimes it was like, is my pride worth losing days? And guys, I'm telling you now that if my mom's not around, it is worth it. It is. It's worth apologizing even with, because in the grand scheme of things, who cares? Now, I'm not talking about something important, like, um, you didn't come to my wedding. You gotta work on that one, something like that. Um, you can hold grudge, I suppose, but grudges can be very, very heavy and they can weight you down. It's a pain. As this is moving this around because, you know, I maybe should have cut these up. So if you're writing this down, go back to page one. If using jumbo marshmallows, cut them in quarters. It'll melt faster. But they're getting there, they just need some heat. You can see them really, yeah, the bottom is really starting to melt. So. You just wanna keep them moving so that you don't burn them. Although personally, I love scorched marshmallows. Give me a marshmallow and a blowtorch. I'm sorry, a creme brulee torch. I love that, I absolutely. And I'm one of those people that like them to be caught on fire. You know, there's people that will, my sister used to be very lightly, lightly, lightly toasted, perfectly nice, sandy colored all around. Me, it was like, put it in the fire. Oh, it's on fire. Oh good, that burnt parts there. Stick the rest in. <laughs> Repeat till you have no marshmallow left. What about you? Did you guys roast marshmallows? I remember we had a um, friends of ours over for dinner and I wanted to do something different for dessert and I had these unscented candles like three wick ones so and their daughter was I think she was about 12 at the time which would make baby angel five I think four or five so we decided to make homemade s'mores s'mores after dinner so I had the graham crackers 
we had the Hershey chocolate and we had these marshmallows and I had log sticks and we roasted the marshmallows over the lit candles. And our friend, the dad part, he, he said he never had a s'more. He didn't even know what a s'mores was. We were dying. We were literally dying um, that he didn't know what a s'mores was. I'm sorry, what now? You have never had a s'mores. Oh, my darling, my darling. Okay, so what you do is you take your graham cracker. Oh, I do it. I put my Hershey chocolate on it. You can use dairy milk. You can use any kind of chocolate you want. Um, but it's best to have just plain milk chocolate. And then you get your marshmallow nice and toasty and gooey and hot and you put it right on top of that chocolate. You take the other graham cracker and you put it on top and kind of smush them together and the marshmallow will kind of ooze out and it will melt the chocolate and then when you break it and oh my god. Mm, it's so good. It is so good. Okay, so see it just in that chatting. It's, it's melting now, guys. It's actually gonna be quick soon. So you just gotta keep it moving. That's the pain in the ass part, but it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. And when you get it into nice creamy consistency, then you work like hell. You add your cereal and you pour it in your pan and you flatten it with your spatula. And you want the rubber spatula. Oh my Lord, I remember my mom making these with a wooden spoon or even the metal spoon. And we would spend days trying to get the marshmallow off. Actually, why didn't we just run it under hot water? I think she just did that to keep us busy because it was our job to clean up. She had four children, three three and under, so, because my brother and sister are twins. And my oldest brother is 10 years older than I am. So my poor mother had a three-year-old, a 13-year-old in the midst of teenage puberty angst and two infants, one of which um, was special needs. So if the poor woman wanted us to mix marshmallows and get the marshmallow off in the metal spoon, so be it. Okay, so this is what it's starting to look like. You can see the marshmallows are pretty much losing their shape, but we need it to be creamy because you don't want pieces of marshmallow. Now, I know some people do, and they'll add in a few mini marshmallows. So whatever floats your boat, okay? You can add nuts. Um, we're adding white chocolate chips. You can add any kind of chocolate chip you want. Pretzels would be really good too. I have pretzels, but uh, because we're taking um, a little wee trip <clears throat> tomorrow, we were gifted. I went to that Mary Burke show and I got one of those guess where you're going trips. It's so cool, guys. It's like a hundred bucks. Well, I think they're 50 to a hundred dollars. Mine was free. And what you do is they give you envelopes and you go to your first place and you pick where you wanna go. Like if we're doing um, um, a farmer's market type thing and flea markets and things, but you can do a, an athletic one. See, I go all purse lipped at the thought of hiking. Um, you can do a haunted one, that was the, my vote. You can do historical. But you get these envelopes and after you go to your first place and you check it out and do what you want to do there because it's all up to you right nobody is dictating then you open the second envelope and it tells you your second place and you can say you want an all-day trip you can do an overnight trip if you want but you got to pay for your hotel um, we just wanted a daytime trip you know so we're very very excited to do that we're almost there, you guys. And my arm is getting sore. And this is great if you've got kids that can help. And don't be afraid to let your kids cook. I don't care how old they are. Baby Angel's been making salad dressing since she was three, okay? Just be careful, watch them. But there's no reason they can't help stir, you know? You can guide their hands. 
but get them comfortable in the kitchen. We're almost there. There's like three marshmallows left. And you don't want to overcook your marshmallows because then it's going to be hard as a rock, your squares. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what we've got. Okay, see how they're all melted down? Those are bubbles. Now I'm going to take my cereal. I'm going to take some vanilla. Pop it in. I like vanilla. Okay. I'm gonna give it a stir. We're gonna turn off the burner. Okay. And then we're gonna give it a stir and get it all mixed up. Okay. We need it all mixed up. And I do think we're gonna need that extra cup. So I'm gonna put that in. It's about a cup. This is one of the easiest things to make. But you know what? Everybody likes it. They're sticky, but they're fun. Now, because I have them like that, I'm going to add in my mix-ins, which is just those white chocolate chips, and give it a good mix. Because I don't want to really melt the chocolate. I just want to get it mixed in nice. And I'm going to come over here. Can you see? Good. And we're going to pour it in. And it should, it's going to come out pretty easily. And then when you've got it all out like that, okay, you always get the one that wants to stay. So just set that down. Like that. And you're going to spread it. And you're going to let it cool. Flatten it down, spread it, let it cool on your counter for a couple of hours. You can pop it in the fridge if you're so fancy, and then cut it into squares. Keep it in an airtight baggie if you can make it last. I'm making these for our trip tomorrow. So that's it, you guys, and then lick your fingers. I like them. <laughs> You'll never see me eat a raw marshmallow, but melt it into something, I'm there except I have perfume on this hand. That's really gross. <laughs> Anyways, my loves, I hope you enjoyed the cook with me today. So, as always, I love you, I value you, I honor you, and I'm so very, very glad that each and every one of you was born. Bon appétit!